In this video, we're going to introduce two new functional groups and show how the naming changes as we talk about other functional groups. To start, we're going to talk about alkene. What an alkene is, is when you have a double bond between carbons. And so C2H4 is an example. Double bonds between carbons have different reactivity than single bonds. In fact, single bond carbons are barely reactive. Um, but double bonds actually react quite nicely. An example here for ethene, which we'll get to its naming. This is why we can have fresh fruit in seasons where it really shouldn't exist. In the old days, a lot of fruit varieties, if you when you pick them, they stop ripening. And so if you, you really only had a couple weeks to pick fruit where it was right. Earlier, they were kind of hard and sour. After it, they were kind of mushy. And so the late harvest ended up going to the animals most of the time. The early harvest didn't have a lot of use except maybe some preserves. It's also part of why we used to preserve so much food. You couldn't get it after a month later. These days, you can walk into a store and buy an orange or an apple basically any time of the year. Well, what we discovered, we would pick some fruit a little early just so you could start it and then have it to sell as feed later because early fruit tended to last a little longer. It hadn't really ripened, so it didn't rot as fast. It would hold longer and be available for use later on. Well, right about the time Rockefeller Standard Oil came along, suddenly even farmhands could afford to have oil lamps at night. And so they'd stay up into the dark playing games or whatever, but the idea was they were burning the oil. Those early lamps weren't that efficient, and so instead of burning all the way to carbon dioxide, some of the oil, when it burned, became ethene. What they noticed is that the fruit around where they were hanging out started to ripen, even though it had already been picked. What they discovered is that ethene is actually a naturally used signal in fruit to indicate to the cells to begin ripening. So even if it's been pulled off the plant or the tree so that it doesn't get the signal from the base plant, you can artificially put ethene on it and still cause those cells to start reacting. And so we can actually ripen certain fruits out of season by picking them early, storing them, and then later spraying them down with a bunch of hydrocarbons. Um, usually by the time you get them and eat them, the hydrocarbons have drifted away. It's a gas. But nonetheless, this is part of how we ripen pre-ripe fruit. So how do we name alkenes? Well, for the most part, alkene naming is very similar to alkane naming. Your first step is to find your carbon length. And so here we said, oh, it's two carbons. It's an eth. But alkenes use a different ending. Their suffix is ene. So instead of, you know, think back to our ethane, when it was carbon-carbon single bonded, it was ethane. When it's carbon-carbon double bonded, it's ethene. We change the suffix, we change the ending of the name to tell us what's different about it. If you have three carbons long. So let's take a look here. Carbon, 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 just to draw this nicer. This is a three carbon long molecule. So full drawing on the right, skeletal drawing on the left. Those double bonds don't go to two separate carbons. It's a single carbon that both bonds are attaching to. And so I have three carbons. Well, there is a double bond. Now, the fact that there is still carbon-carbon single bond is overwritten. The moment you have a single double bond between carbons, it becomes an alkene. It only takes one. You could have a thousand carbons in a line. If any two of them together are bond double bonded, it's immediately an alkene instead of an alkane. Well, this is three carbons long, so it is a prop. And it has a double bond. It is a propene. 
problem emerges with alkenes in that let's look at these two. I can have a double bond, but I could also have a double bond on the middle two. So I've got four carbons in both cases. So it is some form of bute. So both of these will be a bute. And they're going to be butene, but the positioning is different. Much like subgroups, the location matters. So we have to be able to tell you where this is located. Well, we still number our carbons. Now, I could have numbered one, two, three, four. I could have numbered from the, from the right to the left. But if you have a functional group, you want it to be as low a number as possible. This overrides subgroups. So this double bond has to be as low as possible. And so I need it to be on the one. Important point, you must go from one carbon to the next in a double bond. You can't touch only one of them. No matter where it is, the next carbon in line must be the other end of the double bond. And so you must pass through it. You must run along the double bond when you're numbering. Well, the result here is my lowest would be making it carbon one. So it is one, two, three, four, starting from the left. This makes it a bute dash one dash ene. Is a bute one ene. Sometimes you'll see the old names where the one is in front. One butene. Modern naming puts that number right in front of the thing it is talking about. And since it is the double bond that we are telling the position of, bute one ene is the modern proper naming. If we go over and look at our right side, well, it's at carbon two that our double bond begins. I'd notice back in our first one on the left, I didn't mention carbon two. It's assumed that from whatever carbon you mention, it continues on to the next carbon. So I don't have to mention it on the first name. On the second one, I go from two to three. It's just assumed. I just tell you the carbon where it started. So bute two ene. And so if you have a double bond between carbons, it ends in ene, and you have to give the number for the first carbon of the double bond to tell where along your molecule it is located. So back up here with propene, it would be a prop one ene. However, there's no choice for it to be anywhere else. Even if we had drawn it the other direction, while well, you number such that your double bond is as low as possible it still would have been a prop one ene. In those situations where no matter what you do, it gives you the same return, we often don't put the number in at all. And so seeing propene is just as likely as seeing prop one ene. But down in the butenes, it makes a difference where it is located. And so you will see the number included. Additionally, double bonds lead to an interesting option. Well, for alkanes, we could draw our molecules twisted in all sorts of directions. It actually makes a difference how you twist it for double bonds. In this case, going one, two, three, four, a double bond does not allow the molecule to twist. It is rigidly locked in place. As a result, you cannot reorder and retwist around the double bond. This means that our top molecule is different than our bottom molecule. If we imagine a line cutting through our double bond, whenever your group 
enters and leaves on the same side. This is called cis. If your group enters from one side but leaves the other side of that line, this is called trans. You actually have to indicate which of these is occurring because a cis double bond and a trans double bond, again, have different physical characteristics. In fact, when these appear in fats, cis fats and trans fats, if you remember the health food craze where everyone was afraid of trans fats, trans fats have the carbon chain run into a double bond, come in from one side and leave the other side. Naturally occurring fats have them come in from one side and leave back into that same side. And so that's actually the difference between normal fats and trans fats. Well, how do we incorporate that into the name? We just put that term out front. So this is a trans butuene, and the lower one is a cis butuene. Now they, by convention, put the trans and cis at the very front of the name, despite that it's not actually close to the double bond the way the number two is. That's just how it's done. Those trans and cis go way out at front. Additionally, there's another type of multiple bonds between carbons, and that is the alkyne. This is a carbon triple bond carbon. If you have even one Carbon, triple bond, carbon, the molecule is now an alkyne. Doesn't matter how many double bonds, doesn't have, matter how many carbon, carbon, single bonds. Any triple bonds between carbons, your molecule is an alkyne. Well, the suffix is Y-N-E. So give a guess to the name of the molecule just drawn. Well, it's two carbons long, so it is an eth. And it is a triple bond, so it is an ethyne. If you've ever worked in welding, you may have seen this under its common name, acetylene. Um, but it is, modern naming is ethyne. And so if you have if we have this molecule, well, it is how many carbons long? One carbon. 2 carbon, 3 carbon, 4, 5, 6. Alkynes are linear. They're straight. So we're not able to bend them. We have to very clearly indicate where those carbons are. Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you want to have your group as low a number as possible. So we want to number from the right in this case because that'll put it at the 2 position. If we had gone from the left, it would have been at the 4 position. So this is a hex for being 6 long. It is at the 2 position an ein. Hex to ein. Common or old name would have been 2 hexine. But as I said, modern naming puts the number right on the functional group, so it is hex to ine. And that's really the only difference for alkynes. There's no cis or trans for alkynes uh, because there's only one thing in and out and they're linear. There's no directionality to that. It has its own suffix, y-n-e. It isn't seen that often in organic chemistry, but there are occasional uses for it, and those are important when we reach them. All right, this has been how to name alkenes and alkynes, including the cis and trans feature that emerges with alkenes, depending on how the double bond has the main chain pass through it. We'll continue with more of that in future videos.